Yes, hello here. Welcome to Further Together. And reaching relationships, creating a better future. Your friends here, Kudze and Priscilla. We are back again this week. And it's going to be bigger. It's going to be better. I am so, so excited to be here um, on a, yet another episode on Further Together. And tonight we have a guest. The man we're having tonight, uh, 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 I have known, let me bring him side by side as I say this. I, I, I've known Kumamono. I can't, I can't remember when, but you know, it is when we we're discussing some few weeks ago. And I was saying, do you remember those days when you're coming to Mavuku and we, we were doing some recordings? You know, by the way, I, 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 we, we've been going to Nkumamono in, in the studio to do some recordings. That, that those were in the 90s, like the late 90s. What uh, were you yeah, recording? 1995. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you have the date. And I was just going to ask him, what were you recording? We were recording to? with Bish. Yeah, uh -huh. we were doing a reggae music with Bish. Mm. So uh, uh, if yeah. there is one word that I can say and uh, I can use to describe uh, Clive Monumkud is consistency. Um, he is one man who have played with the who's in who of uh, Zimbabwean music industry, played with Thomas Mapumo, played with Oliver Mchukudzi, uh, played with uh, Andy Brown, played with uh, 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 in the gospel music, Fungisai, Elias himself, a gospel trumpet. You know, back in the mm -hmm. days, I remember this a time whereby we would be in the Harare Gardens and we are having like a five-day festival. And Mono would spend the whole day playing guitars for each and every band wow. that is coming. That's that's how good the guy is. And now he has moved into uh, music production. Come on, Mono, you're welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Kuzi. And my name is Priscilla. I'm very happy to be here. And wh why do you call yourself God's favorite guitarist? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've been asked a number of times why I call myself uh, God's favorite. I think, uh, first of all, if you look in the Bible, there's a man who wrote uh, the book of John. He also calls himself uh, Jesus' favorite. He writes as, uh, uh, he says, uh, the disciple that Jesus loved. Love. So yes. it's sort of like the same concept. Because, uh, but in my case, I look myself as uh, somebody who is really favored by God. Because uh, if I look at uh, my history and um, the number of friends that I started with that uh, passed away due to a number of uh, reasons, like uh, due to uh, the number of uh, temptations that uh, befall musicians, and uh, some of the uh, mischief they went through, I also went through them, but um, all of them, they passed away and I'm still around. So I sometimes ask myself, how come I, I was missed by this, uh, by this pandemic? How come uh, death did not visit me that time? So I just mm. find, um, thinking to myself, I think I'm highly favored. So I think um, I'm God's favorite. <laughs> <laughs> and before we go yeah. any deeper there may be some viewers who want to know why is mr mono by himself tonight where is am i guru tonight and why is am i guru not sitting beside you <laughs> uh, first first of all my wife is a very private person even you, you notice that even on Facebook, there are very few pictures of her. She doesn't want even to be taken pictures. But uh, most of all, she, she has a condition, so she takes medication. And uh, the medication uh, causes her to sleep a lot. So by this time, she will be fast asleep. So mainly those are the two reasons. But uh, I think the first one is the biggest reason, because she doesn't want to... to, to, to to be somebody who is very public. Even when I go for shows, she doesn't want to come for shows unless if our son is playing, our son Takakunda. So yeah. I think the only shows that she agrees to attend are the shows where our son will be playing. Like last Saturday, our son had a show in Rare Gardens, a theater in mm -hmm. the park. She, she agreed to attend. So it's basically my wife and my daughter who are very private, by, but my son is always um, everywhere, like the father. So it's like <laughs> father and son uh, in the public sphere, and mother and daughter don't want to, to interact with the public. 
yeah. Oh, uh, 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 a lot of people who are watching right now, uh, they know you as Mono the producer, and uh, we know you where it all started. Can you just take us through the journey, uh, uh, or how you the marriage journey started? Okay, um, we met in June nineteen ninety three. So. Um, my wife, she used to stay in Hatfield, and I was a ghetto boy. I used to live in Kwazana. So yes. they paid a visit to Kwazana, the area where I lived in June 1993. And um, I remember she came to live uh, briefly at a house opposite the house that I lived. And there was a girl that used to live at that house who I was friends with. Her. She was called uh, Florence Piri. So the first time I saw him, I talked to Florence and I told her I want to speak to that girl and I told her my mission and everything. And I remember mm -hmm. Florence started laughing at me with, ah, one more, no, that girl is from the low density suburbs. You are from the ghetto. Uh, a rasta. She won't be interested. To, yeah, and I was a rasta. And I, was, uh, I, I remember I, I, I used to like walking around without shoes, with my dreadlocks. Mm -hmm. And um, she was a clean cut girl from the low density areas. And so Florence was telling me, ah, you know what, you don't, um, you are not um, the same class with her, so you never win her. So I told her, you know what, I just want a chance to speak to her, just organize a chance for me to speak to the girl. And um, she did, although she didn't have faith in me, but she did organize. Um, and uh, on Saturday, 12th June 1993, we started dating and um, when we started dating the father visited these children that time in June 1993 and uh, some neighbors told, uh, told him that um, that's your son-in-law pointing to me and the father saw the way I was dressed the way I was walking in the streets without shoes and so forth and he was <laughs> angry <laughs> and she was yeah. beaten up she was beaten up thoroughly until she bled. And oh. uh, she was taken away from Kwaza and uh, taken back to Hatfield where they lived. And she was warned mm -hmm. never to visit me again. But she kept visiting me. He found, he found it out. And then he took her out of Harare to Mazoe. But she kept visiting me. And uh, little did I know that the father was a foster parent. He was not the mm -hmm. biological father. But she's oh, an yeah. orphan. And um, he was very angry because he kept visiting me and uh, he chased away from, from home. So she came back to me telling me that she has been chased away. So I organized with one of my cousins so that she could uh, stay with my cousin temporarily. Mm -hmm. But um, when she went to live with my cousin and uh, some of my relatives started approaching her, telling her that... Um, uh, they were thinking that she needed a more stable boyfriend because uh, since I, I'm a musician, they were telling her, you know what, our mm -hmm. um, relative is a musician and the musicians do not marry, musicians are known with our role, so I think you need better look for a better boyfriend. <laughs> but my my wife had faith in me. Because you know, you know how discouraging it is with uh, your boyfriend's relatives are telling you to look for a better boyfriend. Telling you, your, mm. our, our relative is, is totally thing. hopeless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but mm -hmm. she, she, she believed in me and uh, she refused to, to let go. So when my father had that, um, I now had a steady girlfriend and uh, he wasn't really sure that I was serious or not. And uh, he told me, you know what, uh, we didn't want to have anything to do with the girlfriend because we have heard that she's an orphan and uh, usually orphans are followed with evil spirits and then goes so we don't want it mm, so mm, i told mm. him and um, came up with the plan so i told him let's get pregnant and pre pretend that it's a mistake so, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that, so that, that's monophilosophy pregnant. back in the day <laughs> yeah that's a monosophy there so <laughs> she became pregnant and when she became pregnant i remember my aunt telling me that uh, my girlfriend was pregnant and I, I pretended to be surprised. And um, mm. when my father heard about it, he said, you, you know what, we don't care that your girlfriend is pregnant, but we don't want her here. 
And I said, she's wow. not going anywhere. And, and he, he said, how can you say she's not going anywhere, yet you're sleeping in your mother's kitchen, you are not employed, you are not bringing in money. And I said, I'm employed mm. because I'm a musician, but it's not bringing in money yet, but I'm going to make money later. And he said, you know what? Well, I'm giving you two weeks to to move away from your mother's house. The way, by the way, my mother and father were separated. Separated, but still yeah. He had, he had some power still to come to my mother's place and um, cause chaos. So he gave mm. us two weeks to move away from from home. In that time, I tried by all means to to raise some money and failed. That time, uh, I was playing. I remember I was playing for for a rumba band, and there was no money coming in. And we were given mm. two weeks to to move away from home. Move from the house. And he had said, if you want to to come back into the family, make sure you get rid of your girlfriend. And uh, if you don't want to get rid of if you don't want to get who, rid of your girlfriend, you, you can't. Uh, yeah, she was pregnant. And I said, you know what? I'm, I know that that's my pregnancy. I'm responsible for that pregnancy. And uh, she's not going anywhere. So he said, okay, if you don't want to, to, to get rid of her, both of you move away in two weeks. So for the two weeks, I tried to raise money. There was no money. And then mm -hmm. in, on Monday, 27 June 1994, uh, evangelist Kasinga Kore from Zaeja visited me. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. uh, Bishop, who is now Bishop Admire Kasi. Yeah, he's now Bishop Admire So he visited yes, me yeah. and said he was looking for a guitarist. He was working for Zaeja Church, blah, blah, blah. And he wanted to go with me to, to a practice session that midnight, that, that night. And I told him, you know what, it's too late and I don't know you. So I can't go with you anyway this time. But I'm coming tomorrow, 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock sharp, I'll be at your house. So he told everybody, and he said, ah, you know what, I don't think that uh, Rasta man is coming to, to our rehearsals. Let's look for another guitarist. But he was surprised the following day, I was at his house. So when we did the first audition, he was auditioning me, and I was also auditioning his band, thinking, mm. are they good enough? Because I don't want to play with people who are amateurs. So we were auditioning each other. So as soon as mm -hmm. I played, he was very much impressed, and I was also impressed with his band. And he said, I want you to be part of my team, blah, blah, blah. We will be paying you every month, and so forth. Do you have any problems? And I told him, you know what? My girlfriend is pregnant, and my father can come anytime. We were given two weeks to move away from home. And uh, <laughs> the two weeks, the time has elapsed already. <laughs> so he said, you know yeah. what? Let me give you money right now, and then you look for a place to stay, you and your girlfriend. Uh, so, mm -hmm. he gave me money to, to, look for a, to, to, to look for a house. So, I went back home, looked for a house, and as soon as we moved into that um, house, my father came to my mother's place, wanting to check us out, and he was told, you know what, they are now renting somewhere. So, he couldn't yeah. come to my place to chase us out. So, mm -hmm. uh, I remember even when my daughter was born, she was born in 1994, uh, mm. 7 October 1994. My father spent a whole year without seeing my child because he was angry, because he wanted my wife to go, and I refused. So, he was very angry, but later on, he, he, he forgave us. But basically, that's, that's my history with my wife. So, uh -huh. we've been together since that time. It's now 20... 20 what? 26, 25, 26 years, I think. 26 or years 19, now. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So that's yeah. our history. Uh, uh, fast forward now. Uh, you, you have to, to know that uh, Takai will be watching some of these interviews. You're mm -hmm. a musician, you've been going out, and I know that a lot of people, uh, just on the, on, uh, on the segue, that a lot of people have been complaining that, Mono, how can you take your son to go to do music? Because you're like taking him and throwing him in, in a lion's den. People are dying in the music industry. And you got your own philosophy of saying, you know what, I've been there, I've done that, and I know. Um, on the other hand, you know the bad side of it, and you know the good side of it. So we, 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 we want to know now that fast forward 2020, 20, 2021, um, mm. you are living with Jean. What has changed within you from there looking at it now? 
Um, we are still very much in love. You know, our marriage is still very strong. But uh, coming yes. back to your question, I remember Taka's first gig. I think it was in 1990, uh, 2014. His first yeah. gig uh, in a club, and I, I think he was still around 16. In I his think teens, he was still around 16. Yeah, and uh, like you said, the number of people were coming to my inbox telling me uh, all sorts of, uh, giving me all sorts of scriptures. We are taking your son into the beer walls. He's going to meet prostitutes. He's going to be very promiscuous, blah, blah, blah. And I told them, you know what? This is a job. So mm. if he goes in the club at this age and um, I, if I taught him well, he, he won't be affected. But if I didn't teach him well, he's going to be affected by all sorts of uh, temptations. And it's good for him to see all that so that his, his mind is, uh, he can make up his mind. Because uh, I also have a daughter. My daughter is the firstborn. I remember um, when I used to do school visits at a school, the teachers would take me aside and ask me, uh, Miss Amkundu, what type of teaching did you give your daughter? Because she's very different from all the other girls. She's not affected by peer pressure, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. They will sit, sit with me down and um, ask me, are you a pastor? And I tell them, no, I'm just a musician. I'm a guitarist. And they will ask me, how did you teach your daughter? And I, I always told them that I sit down with my kids and I tell them all the bad side, all the good side of the what happens in the world, like my daughter will tell her, you know what, Tiswa Marsh, we are the men, let me tell you how we trick you, the women. Mm -hmm. And um, I will tell her about all all the things that happens in the world, and I will do the same to, 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 to my son. And I tell you, both my kids have never even had a single bad story about them. Everywhere I go, mm -hmm. I'm always told about um, how good they are, how well behaved they are. So... That's how I raised them. Yeah. Yes. Um, thank you so much, guys, for joining us. Sister Angeline Mure says, what a testimony. Well yes. done to yes. you yes. and your wife. And Charles Ender says that, what a story. You guys are meant to be together. And um, thank you. some years ago, you did um, The Year for Jean, which That's is 2012. 2012, an album yeah. for your wife. What inspired you to, to do that album? Um, I've always noticed that once in a while, artists uh, who are in steady marriages, they always do a song for their, um, for their wives. Some do them for their girlfriends and then divorce later. But anyway, um, <laughs> I've noticed that there are some who do songs for their, um, for their wives. So I decided to make it a full album and just mm. dedicated, dedicated a full album to my wife just to thank her for standing by me and telling her that she's a good wife and so forth. So in 2012, I did this album that you mentioned. It's called uh, Tunzio for Jin, which means songs for Jin. And it's a full album with about um, 12 songs. So that's the wow. inspiration behind it. Mm. Wow, 12 songs, baby, write one for me. I, 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 I will, I'm Inspired coming. Inspired to write <laughs> only one. I, 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 took I, this, I, took, I took this from your Twitter. You say very few musicians post pictures of their wives. Mind you, Nina, mm -hmm. I even did a full album for her in June 2012, for Jin. Uh, our topic tonight is marriage and fam. You know, mm -hmm. you, 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 you've been, you've been, uh, you, you got married to Amai Guru Jin when you were just a Rastafarian with your uh, multicolor Jamaican vest, walking barefooted. And God took you from where you were to uh, a certain level where you are going to. I remember back then you were coming from Germany, meeting in town. Oh, I've been in Germany, I've been to America, I've been yeah. to the UK with uh, Choniso, with. Uh, you Chuk played for Mutuku. Yes, the, with all those big guys. Big guys and, and, yeah. and ladies were coming around you. I, I, I remember one of the days when we met close to the parliament. These ladies were just looking at it. Oh, he plays with Chuku. How have you managed to conquer and uh, I'm staying with one wife, one wife and not, you know, live and go for others? For these slave queens. Yeah, um, the good thing about me is before I entered the music industry, I did a research. That time I didn't even know that I was doing a research, but um, 
I will read uh, books about um, foreign artists, like uh, artists from America, artists from Jamaica. Like my all-time favorite artist is Bob Marley. So I used to read books about Bob Marley. I would read books about um, uh, Jimi Hendrix and Beatles. And uh, after some time, I started reading books and uh, watching interviews by local musicians. So I started uh, knowing the bad side and the good side about the music industry. That's when I started knowing about the term called uh, groupies. Groupies are um, women who throw themselves at uh, musicians. And um, mm -hmm. most people would think that uh, groupies are um, like uh, prostitutes. Uh, in fact, 90-something percent of them are not even prostitutes. Some of them are gainfully employed. But their prize that they want from a musician is just to sleep with a musician. So that they mm -hmm. tell everybody that I've slept with and so and so. And uh, if you um, research on the internet, you can uh, read about uh, groupies like um, this another one called uh, Cynthia Plaster Caster. She boasts about uh, sleeping with uh, hundreds of musicians. So mm -hmm. when I entered the music industry, I knew about um, the bad side of the music industry, the good side of the music industry the bad side of the musicians that I admired and the, 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 the side of them that I did not admire. So I made a choice back then which, uh, when I became a full-time musician because I made up my mind, I think around grade seven, I think when I was around the age 12, 13, that um, I would want to be a full-time musician. But I wanted to prove to the world that you can be a musician and be a different musician. Like I told you mm -hmm. that... Um, my some of my relatives approached my wife and told you that uh, our relative is a musician nothing will, nothing good will come out of him he won't mm. marry you he will abandon you so um, even when she got pregnant she thought i was going to say i ah, know you know what uh, it's over but she was surprised when she told me that she was pregnant we celebrated i even went and bought mascard but i think my mascard did you far to celebrate or she was pregnant so <laughs> I always had this idea of proving to the world that you can be a musician and be a different musician. And mm -hmm. also, I wanted to prove to my father that I can be a musician and be a different musician. And by the way, a number of musicians in Zimbabwe uh, were what they call marombe or vagabonds. They wouldn't marry, mm -hmm. they would just go around uh, having children everywhere. So I just mm -hmm. said to myself, you know what, I want to be different. I do not have children out of wedlock. I want to have all my kids in the house and uh, I want to have one wife. I don't want to divorce. So I made up my mind that when I marry, I have to make sure that I marry someone that I really love so that I won't uh, have to go through a divorce and have my children suffering because of my bad decisions. Because I also come from a broken family. So it's some mm -hmm. it's things that I, I had made up my mind uh, that I'm going to walk like this, I'm going to live my life like this. And I am happy that I managed to maintain most of my principles. Mm. Wow. Yeah, uh, uh, Angeline says you are truly a game changer, you know, mm. knowing the music industry, knowing where you have been and those big gigs which you have attended and, uh, you know, the places that you have been to, it, it, it really shows that you are uh, somebody who is determined to follow his dream. Uh, yes. Thank you very much. Especially... Especially when I was in Tukus Band, I think of all the groups that I played for, all of them Tukus Band, they had the most temptations than any other groups that I played. I know. For. Was, <laughs> I know. I Tell remember, us about them. Uh, I remember when you're playing on stage, some of the ladies will, will be giving you a sign like this. And if mm. you just nod your head or if you smiled it here, yeah, you'll find they're waiting for you at the backstage. And at the backstage, there will be... Uh, security guards uh, manning the the place so that no audience, no, no people from the audience would enter. But for some funny reason, you find the ladies there. Some of them they would pay their way uh, to to get backstage, and they'll be waiting for you. And uh, by you just giving uh, your phone number, it means you have agreed to a proposal. So there will be no time for any proposal. You just get to business. So. Mm. Um, that's why you find that in all of them because it's been a lot of musicians passed away due to HIV AIDS because mm -hmm. um, as you know for men they say that men the two main instincts of um, 
main uh, survival in the reproduction. So yeah. many men find it very difficult to say no when they are when they are offered uh, sex. Mm. So a lot of our um, um, band members they passed away because of that. Even Oliver Tukuz himself, he was old. He was the oldest guy in the band, but still, you will find eighteen-year-olds they would um, send notes to him. They would uh, uh, oh. look for his number. They would look for his hotel room number. And uh, I remember the other time we were playing in Zambia, a lady threw a small letter. It was red, so it it it, uh, it hit me, and the lady gave me a sign. It's not yours. Give it to give it to, to give it to the owner. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I kept it. I gave it to Mtugu after the show, and Mtugu used to call me the uh, pastor. So the following morning, mm-hmm. he was telling me, All right, pastor. Uh, did you read the letter that you gave me? And I said, no, I didn't. So he showed me the letter. The lady was 18 and she was advertising herself. You know what? I'm from Zambia, from here in Zambia. In Zambia, we're taught Chikapa, blah, blah, blah. I'm very good in bed. So mm. I can come to your room, blah, blah, blah. And of course, all of them did, he just ignored it, but he kept it so that he could show me what was in the letter. So mm. uh, with Mutubudzu, we used to laugh a lot about such um, such stories. Mm. And, and, and you having uh, heard, toured, you know, internationally, number one. Number two, you have tons and tons of musicians who are coming into your, into your studios. And some of these young guys, they come complaining, you know what, I just separated with my wife and this, my wife is doing this or my girlfriend does that. What do you uh, attribute as the main challenge that is causing divorce among these uh, celebrities? young and famous i think number one some of them uh, they enter the music industry without knowing what happens in the music industry you know how it is with mm-hmm. the, maybe you grow up uh, girls ignoring you then all of a sudden you have all these uh slay queens approaching you and uh yeah. i always tell them with the, there's a difference between a uh, wife material and my power ranger was uh, <laughs> if you just pick any woman, <laughs> if you just pick any woman and think that she can be a wife, uh, th- th- that's very tricky and very dangerous. So mm. a lot of them they make those mistakes. But uh, another mistake that's uh, another problem that we have these days is that uh, people are getting their marriage tips from Hollywood because people are watching mm. movies and see what they see in movies and think that's uh, that's real life. And uh, mm-hmm. that's another serious problem because what you see on TV is not real life. Mm-hmm. So I think when it comes to marriage, there are certain principles that should remain primitive. Because uh, mm-hmm. you can't update marriage. You can't update uh, marriage principles and say we are now in 2021, so things have changed. Everything else can change, but human nature can never change. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I always tell people with the... Uh, when it comes to human nature, human nature will always remain uh, pre- pre- primitive. You can update mm-hmm. your phone, you can update your TV, you can update everything. But uh, as for marriage, marriage is very is one of those principles that you have to remain primitive with um, old school rules. If you, once you try to update uh, marriage rules, you always end up in divorce. Mm. Once you try to update marriage rules, you always end up in divorce. And uh, this is one of the biggest challenges. And that's why we are seeing most of these young guys who are getting into me, including the old guys, you know, they can't stay uh, with yeah. one marriage. Yes, yes. Mm. And the issue and because, on... What happens is uh, we are copying Madofo. <laughs> if you want to copy, <laughs> if you want to copy... You need to copy somebody who is uh, who's who's made good it. In who's school. Mm. And uh, America is good in everything else, in technology, their music, and everything. But when it comes to marriage, those guys are dumb. Those guys are for. So I always tell people to, <laughs> if you want to copy good marriages or how to run your marriage, never copy Americans. They, mm. they, they are the worst. They are the worst people to copy. So people think that since they are very good with their technology, they are very good with their music, they are very good with their movies, they are now good at everything. When it comes to marriage, mm-hmm. I think it's best to copy people. We are the ones who can teach Americans how to run a marriage. They, are, to they run can't a good marriage. teach us anything. Yeah, mm-hmm. they cannot teach us anything. 
<laughs> this, you another know, nugget, another this nugget. one is going to be the, the takeaway for me. If mm. you're having to copy, make sure you're copying somebody who's made it, somebody who's making it yeah. in that industry. <laughs> yes, yeah. and um, Fazi agrees with what you're saying. Um, there's a question here from um, Kenneth Richaka, which says, did you ever, I can't read it. No, All right, uh, yeah. sorry. Uh, <laughs> did you ever had uh, mama following you at your shows? Um, in order to block those who may come for you. Yeah, in, in this regard, they yes. mean, uh, am I Guru Jin? Have she ever tried to follow, follow you? Or, you know, big brother just hiding to check you from the from behind? Um, she's never done that. But I uh, remember uh, there is a time from 1994 to year 2003. That time, I remember I worked a lot for gospel music more than all the other genres. So that yes. time I was doing a session work for people like Fungisai, Celebration Choir, and so forth. And uh, since she's a very strict Christian, she doesn't want to attend all the other gigs. gigs so as yeah. for gospel, she would come not to fo not as a way of uh, um, following, following me, but she would, she would just come to to enjoy the music, not mm. not to follow me or to to do some violence. She was just coming to enjoy the music, but she, she's never been that uh, type of a person. Mm. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I, I, for 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 more than twenty years now, I've known her. She still remains uh, my guru. She carries uh, her mother motherly uh, uh, duties with all pride. That's why you know you see Mono doing uh, whatever he's doing there, and you know she all she'll be doing is praying. Yes. She'll, she'll be praying for him. Let him go there. Lord, I'm covering him. Mm. <laughs> I, 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 I trust him for that. <laughs> yes. And, and yeah. one thing as well that I picked up from, you know, this discussion is that they, they, he's given her so much security mm -hmm. and the love that you have for her, which has been consistent from day one. It's like, Baba, just go and do your ministry. I'm here to back you up. So we should say thumbs up um, to you, Baba Nkuru, for just providing that atmosphere where she feels secure, even at a time where you, you, you know, you had the opportunity to say, I've impregnated you, I don't want you anymore, but you held on to her, and because of your nature, she knows she's secure, mm -hmm. and she knows even if you go, Baba is always coming home, so thumbs up to you on, on that note. And before we close, I just wanted to give um, a word of advice to people that are in marriages, and their marriages are on the rocks because of certain behaviors that and wrong decisions that they've made. They've probably copied uh, Manofo and they are looking at those people. <laughs> so what advice mm. can you give to them, please? I think um, a, a, a lot of people who are divorcing right now, they're divorcing when they are still in love. Was uh, I remember somebody saying that... Uh, uh, love is not enough when you are in a marriage. You need, mm. you also need guidance. You also need uh, people who. Give. It was like in our culture, we used to have our aunties, our aunties who would give advice. Because what happens when you are in love or when you are in a marriage? You are one set of people who can quarrel over very stupid things. But since just because mm. you are in love or you are married, you don't even notice that those things are very stupid. But somebody yeah. was saying that you can even argue on where to squeeze your toothpaste. Some some are used to yeah. squeezing it from there. Some are used to squeeze squeeze it in the in between. But over such a simple thing, over such a stupid thing, people can fight and end up uh, giving each other blows. But if you have um, an advisor and you go for counseling, they can tell you you are fighting over very stupid things. So at times people end up divorcing and they they end up. Uh, saying it's over when it's over just between them when it's not over within them and a lot mm. of people end up um, divorcing so i think uh, it's very advisable for people to have um, advisors to have counselors so that every now and then they go for advice and um, especially for those who are still young it's not advisable to go 
and seek help from people from your same age or people who are still unmarried or people who are still new in marriage. Because mm. I wouldn't advise anybody to go to for counseling to a couple uh, who is maybe a year or two years old in a marriage. I think those people will be still very young and still new. Because I think after something like five, five to ten years, people mm. will be matured enough in a marriage enough to, matured enough to give other couples uh, advice. But for people who are in a one year, I think those people will still be at a honeymoon stage. And usually at that yeah. stage, uh, people don't know much. They're still at mm. the honeymoon stage and they don't see anything wrong with the, with the other. With the other, I remember um, one couple, um, they were very newly married. I think there was something like, uh, their marriage was something like two, three months old. And they were giving a testimony, uh, saying, I, I, I'm surprised with the people say that they are in laws who are difficult, who can uh, cause problems in your marriage. I've never seen that in my marriage, but there were still two months, three months in a marriage. And <laughs> so after some time, I met them. After some time, they were now ripe, and they were telling me, I know what. <laughs> It's not, it's not that simple. So I always advise people, to, when you are looking for advice, never go to people who are still new in a marriage. Go to people who are five years or more so that uh, you get um, proper advice from people Period. who have experienced marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Mentorship. And guys, we always emphasize this idea of getting mentors and getting counselors whenever you feel that you need that helpline and like what uh, mr mona rightly said people that are experienced that is the key mm. word and, and it will be very unfair for the young musicians who always follow admire and uh uh, they are inspired by you if we just say we are closing without you giving a word just directly uh to the artist um, remember Takao also watch this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, like I said before, um, you, you need to be careful when you marry. Because uh, marriage is also a business decision. Because uh, yes. I noticed a lot of people whose businesses went down because of uh, the spouses they, 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 they got married to. And this goes for both sexes, whether you are a man or, you, or a woman. And I know a number of women who were into music once they got married, they disappeared because their husband didn't approve of their, um, of their professions. So marriage is a mm. serious business decision. So when you marry, you shouldn't just marry someone just because they are beautiful or because they've got a beautiful body. Because when you start having problems, that beauty won't work. Well, when you start mm. having financial problems, when you start having problems with your in-laws, uh, that body won't work. Well, what works mm. is the mind. So you need to to, to, to take your time before you get married to somebody, to make sure that that's the right person you want to get married to. And you also you need to sit down and look at um, your value systems, your principles, and the laws, and also create your own constitution as a, as a couple. Because uh, if you look at countries, countries have got constitutions. No matter how good the Mali Malawian constitution is or the Zambian constitution, you can't take it and apply it to Zimbabwe. So you can't yeah. copy another couple's constitution. You have to mm. create your own constitution. Like in our marriage, the first time we started dating, I, that's the first thing that I started discussing with my wife. I asked her, do you like guys who drink? And she said, ah, you know what? I don't like drunkards. And I told her, you know what? I drink. I don't much book, And uh, <laughs> she, ended up, <laughs> she ended up compromising and said, ah, you know what? I, I, for that, I'll compromise as long as you you are a good husband as long as you are a good boyfriend. I was still, uh, we still knew then. So we mm. discussed everything, what I want, what I didn't want, what I'm expecting in a marriage. And um, it, we later started living together, I think maybe a year later after we had really known each other. I come from an African background. I want to be the head in our marriage. And I made mm. it clear also to hear with the, I'm not that person who says we have to be equal in a marriage because to me, an animal with two heads is a monster. There used to be somebody who is a head and I want to be the head. I don't want to, to, 
to, to, to follow the Western style. Yeah, you know, they are made some, but we go to the same level. I want to be the head. I want to, to lead you know, to the deputy, and then the kids. And uh, yeah. those are the things that we discussed. And uh, she agreed. And uh, uh, by the time we got married, everything was smooth. Was, um, we knew, uh, I knew what she wanted. She knew what I wanted. So these days, people just consider that they are attracted to a person and then they just get, get married. Like I said, they copy their ideas from, from Hollywood. And these days, mm. if you hear people say, uh, Mazwanus, I change, things have changed. If you hear somebody say that, it means they've seen something new they want to copy from, from Hollywood. <laughs> um, every time you see, hear people say, uh, things have changed. Uh, white men do this. people from Europe do this. It means they've seen mm. something new that they want to copy from, from Hollywood. And I appreciate people like um, Asians, like Indians. Indians have copied technology from, mm. from, from the Westerners. They've copied technology and everything else, but they've stayed with their food. They stayed with their, the good part of their customs. And um, they, they are moving, they are progressing. But we as Africans, all we ever did was copy the negative side of the Western world. We we never even copied the technology. Kind of matter times too. We do at matter time. We just copied the negative side of the of the Western world. So when it comes to marriage, I think we need there are a lot of good values that uh, we can copy from our own systems. Of course, there's no culture. It's not a bad side here. Yeah, you need good side here. Yeah. But if I'm mm. that, the Western world, they magnify the good side of their culture. Do you know, to the Western world, they also used to do human sacrifices. Mm. And they never talk about it. They never talk about it. But when we talk about our culture, we just magnify the negative sides only. We never talk about the good side, by the way. But a lot of good side um, about our culture. And like the way we respect women in our culture. Was it, you know, if we maintained our culture, the good side of our culture, we didn't even need feminism. Because in our culture, mm -hmm. women were, were regarded as gods. And you, if you fight with your mother, why don't you? There was a spiritual mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. But you could fight with your father. You could fight with anybody else. And the woman, do you know that in our culture, um, Mitupo, our totems were our surnames. But women mm -hmm. never changed their surnames. Mm. She would remain Chihira until she died. Mm. She would never change her name. So women were respected. And men were told when you're in the kitchen, you don't own anything. It's the woman's territory. Even if you wanted to, to your friend wanted a cup to, to borrow a cup, you wouldn't touch it. You said, speak to, 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 to my Mukundu. To, 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 to the, to the okay, owner. territory. Yeah. yeah. So mm. in our culture, we had um, specified roles and uh, women were respected. Women were gods. Men were told, if you are, hand, you are going to hunt and your wife is not happy, you would go with the bed like. Yeah, you go mm. with the bed like. So I also have uh, that belief at the back of my mind with the, my wife has to be happy. Whatever I do, I have to make sure that my wife is happy. Otherwise, my <laughs> things will not uh, move. So I think those are some of the elements that our youngsters have to copy from our culture and stop copying, copy, stop copying the world. I mean, the Western world. They are not good role models when it comes to marriage. <laughs> I remember even when I went to America the other time, somebody was telling me, that time I think I was about around 15 years when in marriage, he was telling yeah. me, 15 years with the same wife, is it taboo to divorce in Africa? And I said, no, it's not taboo. There's no need to. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mkoma Mono. You know what? Um, we, we are much honored to have you. We know some, by this time you should be having some other guys jamming because, uh, you know, it, it, we are getting into the, I mean, towards the end of the year, a lot of artists want to produce their music. A lot of artists want to, you know, they have those visions and aspirations that they've been having and they want to fulfill them now. But before we say goodbye, is the guitar closer? I know Jabu, I mean, say, Mono, before you leave, just give us one kanama. And guys, please pardon us. Oh. We would normally 
we will finish, just finish, we will right finish now. by by by, by nine thirty. But you know what? We we just want to give uh -huh. we just want to give uh this time to Mkuma Mono to just give us just a little bit. Okay, this one is dedicated to Priscilla and G. For Jean and Priscilla. Tonight is for Jean and Priscilla. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm trying to think what, but I'm not a good singer. So every time I sing, I have to have somebody who has got a better voice than mine so that we sing together. Okay. Let us say, I play Africa. Africa by who? Or maybe let me play something by Tuku. Boze. I've always admired Tuku, and uh, he's one man who really changed my life after I worked with him. Even the studio that I have right now, I bought it with the money that I was, I was paid. He was a very good paymaster. So I think uh -huh. let me play something by Oliver Mtukudzi. So, so Jabu, I think Oliver you are ready thing. for this one. Let's go, Ngoma Mwana. Mm -hmm. Jamu, I think Priscilla can sing, but really, I didn't want to mess things up with the way that um, Banguru Mono is playing the guitar. I would have just messed it up. So. Right. One more shall we separate from saying thank you so much for giving us your precious position, which is your time. Time to meet. God willing, we'll meet again next uh, week on the same channel. Uh, for me and my beautiful wife, we want to say... Just, can, I just check, can I just check if uh, my wife is still awake? Maybe she can just come and say hi. Yes, 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 please. Yes, just check for us, please. Mm. Yeah, oh, yeah. Hello, my yeah. God. Come, uh, come with the empress. Am I who is here? Hello. <laughs> yes, hello, how are you? Triple Magadie, mm -hmm. what's good? It's good to have you, you, and we are quite happy to have you tonight. And uh, we've been discussing about the marriage, uh, and uh, you know, of course, we didn't speak much about Mabuku when we used to come and have a cup of tea, uh, <laughs> at, at Guru's place. But we, we, we went mm. through all that. And who want to say, Amai Guru, we are so so thankful for having you, uh, supporting Mkoma Mono for my uh, back in the days. I knew him in Fakwa Sekuna, Kudam Chanza then. Then coming mm. all these years up up to now, we seeing you together. Mm. We seeing Taka now. He's a big man. Akuri the manzi. We we just wanted to say thank you very much. And my guru Eli mm. Elisha says it's true. My guru is there. So thank you so much. We know you were taking <laughs> some rest, but for you coming on this platform right at the end, just for our viewers to know that you are there. Kuna my guru kumba. You know, it means yeah. a lot to us, and we want to say thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Wano Nesa, wano kubuda pa TV, wano kubuda pa ma videos, wano kubuda pa ma pictures, ma face picture. Ayo, wawu ya. Anzi, anzi, na bangkuru ruchaka, sando, 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 kuna mai guru, sando, kuna mai guru, anzi, sando, zenyu, they were singing praises, wa chukuru mbidai, Anzi kunaenda kunoriza baba ima muspere mchiti sona sona Andi lakua nauti chichi rukiti kai koko Saka varkuti my guru Thank you so much for your hard work and for supporting uh, baba mkuru mono okay. Yes for supporting now there are two men now Two men who are playing guitars from your house Muchi support uh, But one thing for sure which I, I always tell mkuma mono is I know a my guru is praying for you wherever you go And we do value mm. that Sinoni ya kutenda maniki and this also we respect that we respect that my guru as long as you are standing in your place supporting mm. and being that helper 
Kuna Baba Mkuru, yeah. that's all that that's matters. All really so we thank you so much. Guys, we, we want to appreciate uh, you as our viewers uh, and we are saying goodbye for now. Thank you so much for joining us.